evening and welcome to RFL. I'm Dominic Carter in tonight for Richard French. I'm joined by Phil Reisman. He's a radio host on WVOX and a columnist for the Journal News who wrote for the Journal News for more than 30 years. We're going to look at a few stories that are in the news and we start with the resignation of EPA head Scott Pruitt. He was involved in multiple scandals involving spending abuses accusations he scrubbed his public schedule and reports he asked aides to try to get a high paying job for his wife. President Trump complimented Pruitt on his way out the door and Pruitt blamed it all on quote unrelenting personal attacks on him. OK, Phil, so are you surprised one that he's gone or, or was he on a ticking clock where it was inevitable that he was well, going to be replaced. First of all, everybody that works for Trump is on a ticking clock. We know that. <laughs> I mean, he's just one of a parade of people that have left. I mean, it's we're only we're not even in the full second year of Trump's term. We've seen the Secretary of State go, we've seen the Chief of Staff go, we've seen and and now this guy. Uh, you know, he, he uh, Dominic uh, Pruitt was a uh, a guy that um, was so allegedly corrupt that there are 13 different investigations going 13. on. 13. 13. 13. 13 federal One, investigations. Three. Exactly. So, you know, even though he was in the Steve Bannon mode that Trump loves, remember Steve Bannon? Yeah. There's another guy that's gone. Yeah. Right? But what does this all say about President Trump and ethics? Well, it says that he's, uh, he finally had to do something. I mean, it's, he's, you know, it's clearly this administration is ethically challenged. There's no doubt about that. And, you know, but even conservatives were, were looking at uh, Pruitt and saying he's got to go. Laura Ingram, the National uh, Review, you know, uh, they were all saying this guy is a liability at this point. You know, and he was, I think Trump really liked him. He was, uh, you know, he, in Trump's mind, he probably could do no wrong except that it got to the point where he couldn't sustain having him there anymore. Before we move on, is Pruitt's resignation good news for the American people when it comes to the environment? Well, I mean, he is the architect of getting the United States out of the Paris Climate Accord. You know, he, uh, you know, he's been credited, if that's the right word, for dismantling hmm. a lot of environmental regulations, which Trump liked. You know, and, you know, if, whether or not Trump is ethically challenged, you know, I mean, we can go on and on about that. But the fact is, he liked the disruption uh, mode that Pruitt was in, loved it. You know, this disrupting of the status quo of, you know, the, 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 this denigration of science and, and, you know, the idea that there could ever be a climate change in the country. Trump loves this or loved it. Well, switch, switching gears now to right. immigration, we now right. know that 3,000 kids were separated from their families and only about 500 have been reunited. Now, Governor Andrew Cuomo and several other leaders from our area are demanding answers from Washington. They want to know when families will be reunited and whether they will have and whether they will have the updated numbers anytime soon. It's been more than a week since new figures were provided by the government. So already, federal judge sets a deadline. Right. The administration is already hinting that they're not going to be able to meet that deadline. How does this all play out? Well, I'll tell you something, Dominic. I, you know, I would predict that those kids stuck in that cave in Thailand will get out sooner than these families will be reunited with these children. I mean, that's how long term this is going to be. We don't even know where a lot of the parents are. Some of them have been deported. Some of them are, you know, being held or being, you know, the, the kids are all over the country. Uh, you know, there's some in New York. There's some in Connecticut. I think the, uh, I think there's some of the elected officials in Connecticut announced today that they're going to sue the government separately about the children that are there to get them or their parents. This is this is a uh, a uh, political uh, mess and stupid and cruel and. You know, the, we've all talked about this. Right, so. we have all talked yeah. about it. The administration, uh, the attorney general and some have said, and they've gone back and forth on this, in right. terms of a deterrent, even though we're talking about children yeah. in cages. Can the administration 
credibly make that argument? Should well, they make that type of argument? Well, they've been making all kinds of arguments along, the, along those lines, but the, you know, the, the way I feel about it and the way a lot of people feel about it is you can want to have a sane immigration policy in this country. I advocate that, a lot of people do. But when you start using children as pawns in, in, a, in a political game like this, you're just, you know, you, you just, it's shameless. Uh, and that's what's happened. You know. Now we move to New York City. Yes. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio is taking a lot of Speaking heat of shameless. <laughs> yeah. right. for using an NYPD jet right. from his vacation in Canada back to the city so he could attend an event in the Bronx. It was a street renaming for a fallen officer, so it was totally appropriate for him to attend. But, but... Critics are saying he didn't have to take that plane, which was a counterterrorism jet yeah. used to detect radiation, especially since taxpayers are picking up the tab. So, Phil, Probably I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm going to pass on this one. I'm going to punt to you because <laughs> I'm, I'm always a, a de Blasio critic. I'm going to see what your take is on You're this. You're asking me? I mean, <laughs> come on. Hey, look. This guy, first of all, you know what's really ironic about this is a year ago, almost to the day, he was the one that took the G20, he went to the G20 summit and skipped out on the swearing-in ceremony for the new police officers in the aftermath of that same officer's death. So now here he is, you know, a year later, I guess, trying to make up for it, but he takes a a, a, a government plane that's used for a specific, ter, ter, you know, purpose of counterterrorism. It's going to cost several, cost several thousand dollars. I bet he got free drinks on this flight too, you know. Whereas a, a commercial flight would have been like three hundred bucks. Has, yeah. has this mayor redefined tone deafness? Yes. If you well, that, that's a it's a tone deaf thing. But you know what? It's I think it's it's somehow propelled by the fact. He doesn't have to worry about getting reelected as mayor. He's two a, terms he's and done. Two terms, he's done. So now he's just building up whatever. You know, some of it is tone deafness. Some of it is he just wants to see test the waters. You know, for a future job, uh, managing and running New York City, I don't think is no, is number one priority anymore. Now we head to Lower Manhattan tonight and the corruption retrial of Dean Skelos. Skelos took the stand today. That's a major development as he didn't do that in his first trial. That one ended in a conviction, but it was overturned after a Supreme Court ruling changed the way corruption cases are handled. Today, the defense questioned Skelos. Monday, prosecutors, you can bet on this, it will be a grueling cross-examination. He spoke after he left the courthouse. I think it's uh, great that the jury's hearing my side of the story now. And so far, how do you think that story's going? I think it's going great. I, I'm a bit, I'm covering the Skelos trial. Yeah, the, the show tonight yeah. is dedicated to our coverage of the right. last four or five corruption sure. cases. We'll get to that later. Sure. There's I'm so, a many bit surprised. To choose, so many to choose. But, 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 but Phil, yeah. I am really surprised that Mr. Skelos took the stand. Well, you know what? I was thinking about that, and I was thinking, well, he probably, um, I think they calculated, Dominic, that this would play to the sympathy uh, of, into the court. I mean, you know, he's basically saying, my son, my son, he's, you know, he's got all these personal problems, and I was just being a loving father, you know, and I think he got a lot of sympathy in the last round of this stuff on that point, and I think they figured, hey, you know, let's put him out there. Let's play the sympathy card. You know, the thing that's so ironic, or you know, that gets me about this is that he's he's speaking to a dysfunctional, a dis dysfunctionality of his family. You know, uh, well, you know, I was trying to, I love my son. I'm trying to get him. He's got troubles. I was trying to get him a job because he couldn't hold a job and everything. And the kid, you know, acted like a thug. And so it's so his purpose is, or his ex explanation has to do with dysfunctionality of his family in a state that runs in a dysfunctional, corrupt manner on top of that. But, right, but, but, but Phil, you, you've been around for a long yeah. time like yeah. I have, and we both know right. that these federal prosecutors, that frankly, let's be honest about this, they yeah. are getting their careers set to be governors of different states 15 right. years from now or a lot sooner. They are sharpening their knives sure. this entire weekend right. to destroy Mr. Skelos come Monday. Yeah. Is he going to be able to sustain that? I don't know. You know, he, he may be um, 
good at talking. You know him better than I do, and he may be good at talking his way out of this kind of a thing. Yeah, I don't know. but 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 you here's know. the problem. Yeah. You don't talk your way out of a cross examination <laughs> from federal prosecutors. Well, they are going to trip him up. Yeah. And the jury's going to be watching all of this. Well, he's, he rolled the dice today. You're absolutely right on that. He rolled the dice. He says, okay, now he's opening himself up, so we'll see. Well, we'll Phil see. Reisman, yeah. we thank you very much for joining us. Always a pleasure to see you. Great, Dominic. Thanks for having me. Of course. For the past couple of years, I've been covering corruption trials across our area. Senators, county executives, a former Cuomo aide, Albany politicians. Next, we'll look at all of those.